All right, all right. Hello and welcome everybody to the podcast. Good news for those who struggle. My name is Casey and uh, I am pumped to be here. Yes, the crowd is pumped with me um, because oh, and they're, they're like excited. They're, they're laughing. This is amazing. We've never had a crowd this alive um, for any show so far. And it's got to be because of our guest, Frankie G, our, uh, our worship leader at the Avenue Church. And man, I am really excited to uh, get to process with Frankie uh, just this idea uh, that's going to be central to this podcast of um, worship and how it affects our mental health. And uh, yeah, so uh, I'd love to just uh, hop right in and uh, throw it over to Frankie to tell us. Um, Frankie, uh, do two things. Um, tell us a little bit about how you came to uh, the Avenue Church, and then um, tell us a little bit about why you love worship so much. Sure. Um, so I first came to the Avenue Church uh about three and a half years ago, approximately, and uh, my brother went there first, and he kind of told me about it, and started going, and then, yeah, here we are today. <laughs> Man, I remember you, like, played for almost, it seemed like a year mm -hmm. to a year and a half, and were just super faithful and serving, and then uh, God transitioned you into a leader pos leadership position, and you have been doing fantastic things both on and off the stage for us, really helping to set a culture of worship. Speaking of which, why is worship so important to you? You know, I've, I've always had this special like connection with it when I was, I remember when I was 18, um, that's kind of when it uh, impacted me in a more private way with me just playing the guitar in my room and uh, just kind of fell in love with it there and did that for many years and just kind of learned music and how to play guitar and sing through just worshiping and expressing my love for Jesus. So Awesome. And, and so, um, man, we see you on Sunday morning and it's like happening. It's coming at us and... Uh, it is just an amazing experience that the Lord brings through you. I'm I'm curious, and I think maybe some of our listeners might be curious as well. As, like Sunday morning, take us to Sunday morning. What is happening um, it, to you so that you're able to step into that moment and lead hundreds of people into the throne, throne room of Jesus? Because, I mean, if people don't know you, they they wouldn't maybe necessarily know that you're like not you, you there's a there's a bit of a reserved nature to you and yet on sunday mornings you like just step out and lead like crazy so what happens i i don't know how to like explain it cuz i feel like for me i sometimes look at that person and i'm like that's that's like not me but hmm. in the moment i f i f like I can always expect like the Holy Spirit and just have be confident in that he will like move and lead us in those special moments. And that kind of takes off all the pressure of what I need to do. And it's really become like freeing mm -hmm. to be able to do that with such a cool, like amazing worship team. And, and it's kind of like relieves the pressure. Mm. Um, so yeah, that's awesome because you can definitely sense a freedom that it seems like comes over you on a Sunday to be able to really to step out and do that. So evident that God is meeting you in worship and thus meeting all of us as well. Um, I want to go back to something that you said uh, just a minute ago about how worship became so so critical to you. And it was just kind of like in your room. You know, you grab a guitar and and uh, it's, it seemed like Jesus was meeting you, if, if I remember kind of like what you were saying. And um, describe that experience. How does, how does God meet you? Um, maybe not necessarily on the stage on Sunday, but in some of the private uh, worship moments that you have. Like, it's super random. I, if I could say it's this type of posture every time, I'd probably be lying, but I find it being random times uh 
throughout the day I'm constantly, you know, playing worship music, whether it's driving around or at work. Um, I like to write music, mm. uh, read scripture, read the Psalms, um, pray, um, throughout the day, just kind of like commune with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I mean, there's times where it feels like nothing's there. Uh -huh, yeah. And then there's other moments where it's like, it's really late and I'm exhausted and I feel like that tug on my heart where it's like, Hey Frankie, it's time. And I'm like, no, it's time for bed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, um, I just think that's the cool thing about the Lord, his personalities, like unique to everyone. Mm -hmm. And so those experiences might look a little different for everyone. And it's, it's really cool. Mm. It's a fun journey. Yeah. Yeah. And I know that you write as well. Um, yeah. what, what, how does that work for you? Like, how do you how do you come to a place of actually writing songs and then uh, and then producing and singing them? I yeah I I love writing music. I feel like it's a way I can just express uh, what what the Lord means to me and what He's done for all of us. And um, it's a really cool um, special place in my heart. I I've, I've always like done that on like since I started playing music and then worship leading kind of found me later mm. and um but yeah it, it just it's always been there I'll always have like my iPhone with a bunch of lyrics and voice memos if I got it stolen I would be super embarrassed mm. <laughs> because there's some really awful like sounding pitchy voice memos but I I, I just love like keeping um like something ready just in case because mm. songs kind of happen in conversation or hearing in a prayer or a message on Sunday mm. or like reading scripture there are songs everywhere mm -hmm. so I think I just kind of fall in love and kind of creating music wherever I am mm. so and that seems like um if we were to use the, borrow the term love language that seems like it's a love language between you and the lord i mean it seems like you hear from the lord in that and then you're able to express the love of the lord and that is that fair yeah 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 and that's that's awesome and, and you know like like you said it doesn't have to be that way for everyone um but for you and if there's listeners out there um who can relate to some of what frankie's sharing worship is is um really uh, a space uh, where God comes and, and um, shares his heart with Frankie. And, and uh, you know, it's cool, Frankie, that you um, intentionalize time to be able to capture that heart. And, uh, you know, uh, as we think about uh, worship and mental health, um, these are important things uh, because, uh, you know, oftentimes I feel like when we're in a battle, whether it's with depression, uh, addiction, or anxiety, you know, we are looking for that space to hear from God, to, ex to like experience God's goodness when, um, you know, uh, things, things are, are pretty difficult. Uh, I was um, brought to just kind of like doing some searching and things like that, an article uh, from Relevant Magazine, and uh, the article is entitled, How Worship Helps Me Overcome Anxiety by Rachel Moreland, uh, 2017. And in this article, she talks about her struggle uh, with anxiety and things like that and, and how, you know, this this is uh, it's, it's a difficult thing. And uh, I believe how it's still an ongoing um, kind of saga in her life. But she mentions uh, three things that worship um, is uh, for her. And the first thing she says is worship is a peaceful state of mind. Uh, it's not just a supernatural high on Sunday mornings, she said, but it's it's more of like a practice of uh, ever present, using her words, mindfulness of his goodness and grace in my life. Um, and so whether she's listening uh, to something or, you know, she's just um, you know, basically being mindful, you know, of, of God's goodness, it brings her to a place of peace. Can you, can you relate to that or, or talk about that a little bit from your perspective? Yeah. Yeah, I feel very uh, at peace whenever, you know, worship in my life is, uh, you know, I, I oftentimes feel like there's no way I can get to that place of peace. I'm just not in that, you know, 
mindset or I just have so much going on. But it's actually in those moments where God really, like, for me, has brought me some really cool awareness of, of peace through his Holy Spirit. Mm. And um, it looks really messy sometimes. And I'm not like, I, I it's kind of crazy, but usually I experience like really like amazing worship moments when I'm like really down or going mm. through stuff. Mm. Cause like God's love is always the same, no matter what we're going through. Mm. And that's just really freeing to know that, you know, whatever happens, like he's still there and we're called to like glorify his name because it's not about us. And like, it's a really cool, peaceful thing to be reminded of in worship songs. Hmm. And, um, you know, you, you mentioned that, that God actually brings you to a place of peace that seemingly you can't get there on your own. Mm -hmm. And he does that for you through worship and uh you know as we reference this article here that seems to be um common uh to her as well like like god actually does something supernatural in in the unseen world where he takes you from your your whatever it is your chaos your darkness whatever um to a different space and um yeah and and so that's cool to hear that uh that god does that for you and then you know as you mentioned especially in in some of your your deeper darker moments um the second thing she references is that uh, worship is a safe space it's a space where um she's able to uh, you know she says get up close and personal divulging um her doubts and secrets to him like you would a best friend over a cup of coffee so let's just pause for a second and talk about coffee Okay, I know, I know, we're in yes. like some like crazy deep waters here with worship and mental health. But little known fact, um, my my good friend Frankie here was a barista uh, for Starbucks. And um, hey, so le- in this little um, commercial break, can you just tell us your favorite drink to make, and then comma your favorite drink to drink? Okay, Ooh. depending on the time of day. Mm-hmm. So. Like right now, being that it's a little chilly out, mm-hmm. if if I could, uh, I'd probably make a pretty mean cappuccino. Okay. Like microfoam, really wow. silky smooth. Okay. Okay. And um, then on a regular basis, though, I'm just a cold brew kind of guy. Okay. I um, always go for whatever is available at local coffee shops. I always like to ask them about wh- what their drip is, like where it comes from, because it's really cool the type of coffee that um, is sourced from around the world and how it, like, how people, like, you know, brew it, like the different methods we can brew it. And it's just a really cool experience, so. Amazing. Yeah. And you know, I, that I, I kind of insulted you a little bit. I called you a barista, but you're actually a coffee master, <laughs> correct? Like you had the black apron. I mean, if we're going to be technical, correct? <laughs> you can you can affirm that, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And uh, and and would would there be any like coffee art on the top of your creations, or would it just be like straight? Like, could you make the little like the little hearts and the you know? Yeah. Um, so it's funny. Um, there is something going on. Uh, every in our district we have something called barista championship let's go okay and um i guess i was nominated for like the each store nominates their like barista or whatever you're blowing my mind right now already and so like all those stores in the district did this competition yes and i lost but but was, you were you yeah, were in it you I were like you're yeah. the guy from yeah. your store yeah that's awesome i had yeah. no i had no idea yeah it was cool i did it twice the second time it was it was a messy pour. Like uh-huh. I started dripping over the cup and uh-huh. I started wiping with my finger. It just didn't, mm. didn't end too mm. well. So like I kind of get the next time around, I was like, I think I'm good. I'll sit this one out. <laughs> okay. Send somebody else. Yeah. But uh, that's awesome. I didn't know you were like in that uh, competition. So not only a coffee master, but a coffee competitor. Um, that's, that is, that's actually super cool. And I don't think many of our listeners, including me, um, knew that. So thanks for sharing that. So back to worship is a safe space. 
right? Like a good friend over a cup of coffee, whether Frankie made it or not. Um, do you, do you, can you relate to that, Frankie? Can you relate to the fact that worship creates a space for you to be safe with some of your fears, some of your doubts, disappointments in life um, before the Lord? Is that, does that resonate with you? Yeah, absolutely. It brings comfort. Um, it, you feel uh, like like less focused on what what it is that is bringing you down or fill in the blank. Mm-hmm. Because whenever we focus our eyes on Jesus, it, it changes our perspective, mm. and um, we become less indulged in what we're dealing with mm. and more in love of who Jesus is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So That's good. When you write, do you find that you write um, out of a place of pain or a, a place of like victory or like w- what, what's some of the motivation that, that helps you to put uh, words to paper? Yeah, I, I'm motivated by like f- for me, it sometimes is honestly the music first. Mm-hmm. Um, I love different chord progressions and recording. Mm-hmm. That's kind of like the framework of writing um it's good to have a theme so if it's something that's more joyful or rejoicing um i'll definitely pull things from that or whatever i'm feeling but Mm -hmm. most of the time i try to keep it um you know uplifting Mm -hmm. encouraging to Mm -hmm. me and um yeah it's good um i'm going to uh drop a quote and I might not even quote it correctly. Um, and I don't have the source for it. So the, thankfully, this is a podcast and <laughs> not a message where I will <laughs> I could be potentially judged by for not being uh, better prepared. Although I, I guess that could be true in this moment as well. But um, I, I actually love this quote. Um, Worship is a, an interruption uh, f- uh, with our preoccupation with self. Uh, so I want to let me try it again. Worship is an interruption to our preoccupation with self, and uh, I feel like you said that in your own way, um, in in that last little uh, piece there about how it just kind of shifts the focus. So as we think about people who are struggling um, with mental illness and just battling through that struggle, I know myself, I become. I have a struggle, but then my sin nature becomes radically like self preoccupied, and it's been true for me that worship it mess it messes up that preoccupation and breaks in, and it it like reorients my mind to a God who's never lost a battle. Um, and c- can you can you talk a little bit about how worship is a big focused focus shift? maybe for you or maybe how you see that um, for, for people on a Sunday morning? Yeah, I, I think it's just for me every day, throughout the day, all the time, I'm constantly you know, playing worship songs, um, whether it's practicing them or researching more um, new releases or you know, writing them. Uh, to me, it's always it helps preoccupy myself from, you know, entering in those lies in my head Mm. or those doubts or fears. Um, Just uh, something I've always, always try to do is like whenever I'm feeling a certain way, I'll I'll try and play a song that can um, be my like weapon. Mm. And because there's, I know I can't do it. Like it only, it has to come from the Lord, the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. and uh, just calling upon His name mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. those moments. And I like to drive and like talk to God. And, okay. And um, be around like people you can trust. Having like you around, my dad, mm-hmm. Paul Carley, mm-hmm. the worship team. Like I, I think it's good to have people be aware of like what you live with Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then like you feel like you're not as as alienated wow so 
I think that's good. Um, and and I, you hit on something I think big. So I want to I want to stay here for a second. Uh, worship as a weapon. That that that's big terminology for me, and it, it excites me to to think about that a little bit more. And so, what do you mean by that? Worship as a weapon. How, how does that either protect you or fight against? I, I know you referenced lies. Can you can you flesh flesh that out a little bit? Yeah, I I've always had like this. Uh, I don't know. My mind easily tells me like negative thoughts mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not a negative person i'm pretty um i'm pretty good with that i think it's just because i i'm aware whenever i am mm -hmm. like and i always like to bring that to the lord or bring that up in conversation with others so it's not living and dwelling in me mm. and um i yeah i i believe that praise is a weapon because there's power in in like the lord mm. and like his name and um just declaring those promises, like break every chain, I, playing those songs, I see a victory. Um, I learned that through playing those on repeat, it's become more of like a weapon and um, it's got me through moments in life that um, like were harder and like I learned that, you know, God is always with us. So. Mm. And what do you think it's a weapon against? The enemy. Hmm. Like, uh, you know, I think more recently than ever being a worship leader, he's like, yo, you're, you're kind of like around the church a lot. So I feel like I think for me, the enemy is like tries to throw a little curveballs, whether it's like you're not good enough to do mm -hmm. this. You're... Mm -hmm you can't sing that song, you know, you don't have the words to talk about it. Mm. You don't have like, and it's like really hard to be a leader mm. with those lies in your head. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I'm like constantly like just praying and singing out truths and promises over that because we're our human, we're broken people. We're going to always feel like, you know, never good enough mm -hmm. and like yeah hmm. god's always good enough so hmm. and it seems like um for what you're saying is for you so y there's this gap between what you're feeling and experiencing and maybe even believing yeah. if it's from the enemy or even your flesh and the truth of god and worship it's kind of like the bridge that helps take you from your current dark reality to to the promises of God and and then and thus it becomes a weapon against and specifically you said the, the enemy I think that's huge um, and, and that could be a whole nother podcast but just the idea of like the enemy's presence especially in our mental health battles mm -hmm. um, and so you know we've we've got uh, the the presence of uh, our own flesh brokenness and sinfulness We've got the presence of our our own story, our trauma, our family of origin, um, our our personality makeup, biology, and then we've got this third presence of the enemy who would love for us to remain defeated and captive um, to to just condemnation and lies and anything that would steal joy, right? Like that's that's his main objective, and uh, what we have just been. Um, talking about is the fact that we have a weapon against that, all of those, but especially uh, when the enemy starts to come in to condemn and, and to um, build up lies in our head, when we start declaring truth about who God is and who we are um, to God, that, that becomes like warfare against all three of those things, but especially against the enemy. So if you feel like worship is the last thing you want to do, because it's been one of those moments or days, it's got to be the next thing you do. Would you like affirm that? Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, and that, that kind of seems, seems like um, definitely where you're going. And um, here, kind of point three in this article says, worship paves a direct path to God. So, so check this out. I find that it, it's often in those moments of fear that the channel of communication between um, 
uh, me and God is most fuzzy, uh, but I also know that it's in those moments when I feel at my weakest that worship ought to be the next bullet point on my to-do list, which and I just read that not too long ago, so that was obviously influencing you know, my thoughts. Um, but really, it, talk, talk to us a little bit about this idea that worship, it paves a direct path to God. It like, gives us clarity, if you will, um, into the presence of God, especially when we're struggling. Um, a, has that been true for you? And, and um, yeah, just, just talk about that a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's gotten me to know the personality of God more and more. Um, Simple Gospel by United Pursuit. Hmm. It makes me think of that song because Bill Reagan, the one who wrote it, um, the first verse says, I want to know you, Lord, like I know a friend. Mm-hmm. And I just feel like that's so true with worship, you know, for all of us as we worship him, we want to know him more. And, you know, the Holy Spirit dwelling in, in those moments, bring us closer to him and make us something change inside of us mm. and give us new perspective, power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, so the what what we sing um sometimes becomes more of a reality in our experience no matter what we're experiencing it it's just that we got to sing it we 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 have to enter into we have to intentionalize using the weapon mm-hmm. um she writes here uh, i want to be careful uh as i don't want to for a second portray that i have all, all figured out navigating anxiety uh, and if you're out there trying to navigate anxiety, I think you'll connect with this next statement, can at times feel nearly impossible. More often than not, it feels like treading water in the deep end of the pool and not knowing how to swim. For our listeners who are um, in the, in the, the battle uh, with anxiety, uh, I think that is a very uh, appropriate description of it. And... Um, Frankie, it was interesting because I went to uh, the night of worship uh, that uh, the church, our, our six local churches had last Friday, and it was a tough day for me. It was just kind of a stuck day, as I mentioned uh, in the message, and God did something. I started singing um, that, uh, I, I don't even know the name of the song. I want to call it Never Lose a Battle, but it was a different different song than we sang on Sunday, but I, I just... I. It, there was a there was pieces of that song that talked about like who are you oh great mountain that you should not bow um, be, because like our God you know never loses a battle and it was just so uh, it, it, it something happened to me to be able to say to the Lord and thus say to my soul that God never loses a battle even though it feels like I'm losing can you relate to that can you share a little bit about that yeah it's it's always it always feels super fresh and Mm. like always super new when you have a taste of you know eternity in those moments Mm. and that's why i love worship it's it's always new but you feel at home at the same time Mm. (laughs) it's like oh i get it it makes sense because we're created to be in those spaces Mm. and it's so easy to feel like a little bit off you know a certain day and like then once you get enter in those moments i i realize yeah it's it's like super freeing and like that's why i love worship so much because it like you said something changes Mm. and yeah it's hard to sometimes explain because it's a supernatural unseen reality. It's almost like this when the psalmist David says, taste and see that the Lord is good, you, you just have to taste it, you know, but we know it's happening. Mm-hmm. We know it happens. Um, and that, and that kind of brings us to uh, maybe our next thought. And, and this will, this will be, uh, I think kind of like where, where we'll close, um, close this, this episode. But, it, but I think there's, there's some good, there's some rich stuff here. And it's, and it's on this idea um, of, of a phrase that God inhabits the praises of his people. Uh, and that comes from the, actually the King James version of Psalm 22, three other translations, um, 
write it this way, uh, yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the one Israel play, praises. Or God, you are the Holy One. You sit as king upon the praises of Israel. Uh, that's uh, first one was NIV, and then the next one was ERV. Um, and so I want to I want to read. This is from an article uh, written uh, from Christianity uh, dot com by Jessica Brody, and um, the actual I'll just read from the article, and then we can discuss here. The actual Hebrew word um, kadosh, an adjective uh, for God, that strong concordance sa- says means holy or sacred, and the verb yeshab which means to sit, remain, or dwell. Yeshab is the same word used in Genesis 4.20, where the Bible talks about a man named Jabal, who is the father of those who dwell in or inhabit, live within tents, and have livestock. Praises come from the Hebrew uh, tehillal, which means praise or song of praise. All right. Translations using the word enthroned or sit draw from the same concept where a man would sit as upon a king's throne or at the place of honor at a table is akin to a dwelling place, uh, a place of rest. So then the phrase means God inhabits, rests in, sits upon, dwells within his people's songs of worship and adoration. The word inhabit is not suggesting God is only present when people are singing about him. Obviously, God is not confined to one place. Um, She goes on to write, but the writer of the psalm seems to be saying that God is present and glorified when his people lift his name in honor. Um, So, you know, if if we, and then she finishes that section with, he draws nearer to us when we praise him. So there's something about God inhabiting the praises of his people. It's, It's as though... The presence of God, which is always with us as his believers, um, becomes amplified in worship. Um, and we've been talking about that a little bit um, throughout this whole uh, episode. And, and then it, it sh- the writer here goes on to break this down a little bit more in the context of Psalm 22, which is the King David being in anguish and, and, then, and then writing this. So what do you think the connection is, Frankie, for those listeners out there who are in anguish? Uh, they're battling mental health issues. They're, they're walking through their anxiety, depression, addiction, whatever the case may be. And, um, you know, why would you encourage them to prioritize worshiping even when it's maybe like the last thing they feel like doing? Yeah, I would encourage um, them to ask God to uh, like allow that moment of worship to be something that you're obsessed with. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. I I I feel like you can't force something every day or all, like to worship, but once you taste and see it, mm-hmm. like the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. touches you. Mm-hmm. And like, you're going to be so in love with that, mm. that you're going to always want to put that first. Mm. So that's kind of like relieves a lot of pressure for anyone that's struggling to um, just like ask God, like pray about it. And then like in those moments of worship through a song, if you feel like your heart, you know, pumping, you mm-hmm. know, like sit on that mm-hmm. and like. For me, it's it's funny. Like I'll play the same like hmm. song for a week straight because mm-hmm. it just does something for me that mm. week, and it's like it, I need it. Um, so I I would just kind of yeah encourage everyone to. It's okay to feel like you know I don't you know I, I it's hard you know it's okay to feel like it's hard because you know where we live busy lives, we have a lot going on, you know, but I think once you enter in those special moments and you really experience like Holy Spirit moments like Mm -hmm. that, Mm -hmm. you're going to like always want to be there. Mm. And, or when you go into those moments, you're going to identify it Mm -hmm. and like continue to want to make it a, a ritual or a, everyday thing Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because that's what our soul needs Mm. 
It's like what our soul's longing for. Absolutely. And I think the theology here behind this is even though we're saying like, man, something happens, it's hard to explain. There's a shift that happens. I mean, I I think we've hit on the theology of what happens. God inhabits, dwells in, sits upon the praises of his people. And, and we know that that, uh, there's like a special, there's a special connection that happens yeah. to our souls in worship. And so when our soul is in anguish, it's what we most need. Absolutely. And very practically, you said, I think something that was important. Sometimes you'll just listen to the same song over and over again for a week mm-hmm. or even for a season. And I would, enc- I would encourage our listeners out there, man, if, if you are, you know, if you're in it, if you're struggling through it, find that one or two. There's one or two songs that you can really relate to and just play them over and over and over again and and trust and ask God to meet you in those moments. And what's interesting is there'll be different parts of that song where God meets you in. And, um, you know, and then the idea here is that not not just that worship will be a song, but that it will become a lifestyle. And the catalyst might be the song. But then it will teach you how to live moment by moment, reflecting upon and meditating on and embracing the, the beauty of Jesus, even in the midst of the chaos um, that you might be experiencing. And so, man, I think that's, um, maybe that's, a, that's a great place uh, for, us to, uh, for us to call it an episode and um, just really encourage um, all of you out there um, as you as you continue to navigate uh, your own realities, um, no matter where that might be, uh, that uh, you would see that worship is an integral part uh, of um, your mental health and uh, really the freedom um, that Christ has for you. So may we uh, be worshipers, um, both intentionally when we least want to and when we most want to. And may we uh, begin to live lives of worship. Uh, that's that's our episode. Thanks for joining us. Uh, thank you, Frankie. We love you. And uh, we love being led by you and the team. And I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this episode. And we'll see you next week. Love y'all.